Hey, welcome back. So in this one, we're looking at what is known as type hinting. So type hinting is the process by which you specify what kind of data you want to receive so that you don't receive any other type. So for example, in this, uh, in our previous example here, we had this class that we created and it has a few functions in here. For example, this sanitize function expects this data uh, variable, but as you can see here, there's a for each in there. Now, if I decide to send in a string instead, then I'm going to get an error here instead of an array. So let's see that in action here. So if, for example, uh, here where I'm supplying post. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's change this a little bit. Let's just say um, data, something like this. Let's just say data. Oops, why do I keep doing that? Okay. Data is equal to post. The reason I've set it to data is because I can change the data type of data, but post is always an array. So just uh, to do that. So then I'm going to say, oh, I didn't even need to do this. All I should have done is say data is equal to empty string like so. So I have a string here called data and then I can add it here. Say data like so. So since sanitize expects an array, uh, this for each loop is going to generate an error. So let me refresh this and try to run it. Now you see that it says invalid argument supplied for for each on line 10 there. But now if I do what is called type hinting, I will put array here so that it tells me exactly what the error is. So if I say array over there, it means I expect an array here. So if you have multiple variables here, you can do that, say array, uh, string, like that, my string, like so, okay? So this is what is called type hinting in here. So it means here I expect an array, and so if I refresh the data, like so, now you get a fatal error, which is much better because the other one was just a warning that this didn't work, but the rest of the code continued running and messing things up. So sometimes you may end up losing data like this. If um, let's say you are writing to a database and then instead you are trying to edit a record and then the data that you supplied ends up being empty uh, variables, then you're going to mess up a lot of things. So if you do this uh, type hinting like this, it's going to be a fatal error, meaning the program will stop working when it gets there, meaning it cannot do any more damage to the whole system until that error is solved. So that could be the advantage of doing it this way. Okay, now if I remove, if I do remove this or I set this to post, which is an actual array like that, and then everything will be nice and dandy like that. Okay, very good, very good. So now, as you can see here, this is these are the, the problems, the results of not hinting you see here I have a record that is empty on number five because it w I didn't supply any useful data there, but it still went ahead and saved. So that's why we, that's how you can avoid such problems. Okay, so in the same way uh, we are hinting for the array here, the file name is a string. So here I can put string like that. Okay, and also here, uh, where is that? No, those are the only two places, right? So you can use other uh, types, like for example, int, which is for integer. If the, th the number you're expecting is, an, is an, a currency, for example, which has decimals, you can use float. And then if it's a Boolean, which is true or false, you can say boo, like that, okay? So, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So here we're expecting an array, yeah. So this is the basic idea of type hinting. However, there's uh, another way of type hinting. So let me just remove all this here. Uh, when you're using type hinting for uh, objects, you can do that as well. So let me remove everything I have done here. It's now useless. 
So for example, um, keep in mind that a class is an, a type as well. It's a type of thing. The, the way uh, a string, a boolean, and integer is, a class is one such thing as well. So if, for example, I have a function here and say uh, function, uh, I don't know, stuff like that, because for lack of any word that I want to use, I'll just say echo um, data, whatever the data is at that point. Or instead, I'll just use var dump so that we see whatever the data is regardless the type. Okay, so this is a simple a function. Uh, function, stuff, and then here I provide some data. Okay, and then once I do that, uh, it does a var dump there. So all I want to do is call this function here. I'll say stuff like that. And data here for now, I'm just going to put um, something like that whatever the text is there. Okay, so this is a uh, plain and simple. If I refresh this, uh, I just get string. This is a string and it's something, okay? But now imagine I, I add a type. For example, I say um, a type of car, for example. Now car is not really a, a thing or a type in, um, uh, I can put anything here. It can be doo-doo, for example, or dodo in this case, maybe doo-doo like that. So I'm using this word just to show you that uh, this can be anything right there. Okay. So now if I try and run this, let's see what happens. So now, as you can see, it's telling me that uh, the argument one that was passed to stuff, which is the, the function, must be an instance of doo-doo <laughs> but a string was given instead so this is what it's complaining about it's saying i gave it a string and yet it was expecting a doo-doo so then how exactly can i get this doo-doo so i can use it here instead so let me just say uh, doo-doo there as a variable so what do i equate the doo-doo to so I'll say doo-doo um, if I do this, for example, I say class do do like that, open and close. So this is a class right here. You are used to seeing it like this, but it's the same thing. This is a class right there, a class of do do. And now if I say something like uh, do do is equal to new do do like that okay so once I do this then this qualifies as part of do do so let's see here what happens if I refresh and as you can see no errors whatsoever it's just telling me that the item in there because I told it to do a var dump is an object of type do do and that's it so if I had functions in here, for example, I had a private function called hey, something like this, uh, you will see that it's going to show me in there. I think it will. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. That's a private function. So it will not show. I don't know whether it shows if it's public. <laughs> Let's see that. I've actually never tried this kind of thing before. No, it doesn't. So obviously it only shows properties. So I'm just going to say uh, public or private regardless. Uh, whatever it is, I just want to create uh, something there, a property regardless what it is. Okay, that way I can see it in there. So you can see that it's showing me what the type of item this is. So meaning you can do type hinting for uh, functions as well like this for types that you create yourself these are custom types so do do is your own type uh, and so on now you may have a problem let's do something more let's see something more practical let's say you have a class of um, 
BMW, right? And so uh, here, the class of BMW does, let's say, um, tank size, something like this. Maybe tank size of this BMW is two for some reason. And here I say uh, miles per hour, okay? So we want to calculate the miles per hour. So it's going to return a value, uh, which will be this tank size multiplied by the miles. Okay, something like this. So we're going to supply miles in here as a number. Okay, so miles is going to be a float of some kind like this. Okay, so what are we doing here? I've created a class of BMW. Now here the tank size is two, and then we're just doing a some kind of calculation here where this tank size, which whatever the tank size is, times the miles that we've uh, uh, given there, then we're going to know how far it's going to travel. Uh, yeah, how far it's going to travel for some reason, yeah. Okay, so now if, um, here I'll say BM, oh, let me just do all of them at once, BMW, like that. And now, um, if I create this new instance of BMW and supply it to this function, the stuff, here it should expect a BMW, okay? then what what happens so now once i do this i want to be able to calculate the uh, miles per hour given a specific value right so here what i will do is copy that and put it here and say echo like that okay so i want to echo data because data is the, uh, this BMW here. Oh, maybe I should call it class, but uh, something like that. Let's do this, my class, to avoid getting confused. Okay. So I'm expecting a class of BMW, right? And now here, I just want to echo the miles per hour of this same instance. And I will provide a number here. Okay, now that number can be anything, maybe uh, 2.5 or something, whatever it is, it's expecting that number and they need to return a calculation. So let's see this in action. I will refresh and echo. And you see it shows me five. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is very simple stuff. Uh, we have a class of BMW and then whatever number we provide there, it's going to give us some kind of result by doing an internal calculation. Okay, now the problem comes in if I want to use this same function to do another calculation for a different car. So for example, here now we have, um, this was a BMW. Now this one is a Isuzu, for example. Okay, now this is an Isuzu with a tank size of four. And then it also has calculate miles per hour, right? So this tank size, miles, exactly the same, only that this is an Isuzu. Now the problem comes in if now uh, I do calculate for the BMW, but I want to use the same function to calculate for my Isuzu. So I'm going to say Isuzu like that, okay? So now let's uh, let's try this. So if I now refresh, you see that the first one worked fine because BMW is there. But the second one has a fatal error because it's saying the argument passed must be an instance of BMW, but an instance of Isuzu was given instead. So let's see here. So we gave it Isuzu, but this function requires BMW, yeah? So now the solution to this is to create another function here that calculates for Isuzu and 
another one that calculates for BMW. So I'll have two functions. Now that is such a waste because uh, we are repeating the same code. This is exactly the same code here. No difference, but we just want both types to work here when we do the type hinting. So this is where we can use an interface or we can use a uh, an abstract class, right? So let's try and um, let's try and use an interface, shall we? So here we have a class of BMW and another class of Isuzu. Quite alright, and that's that's fine. But what we can do? Let me remove this and bring it down here so that we have a, a good sequence of things here. Okay. So instead, what we will do is let's create an interface instead. So let's say interface. Now we're going to call this interface car. Okay. Now, <clears throat> remember that an interface uh, can only uh, have, uh, what's this? We, we, we just need, it, it can't have actual functions. It should only have uh, something like this, I'll say public function miles per hour, like that. Okay, so we cannot implement this function here. Now, the advantage here is that, as you can see, we have exactly the same function in BMW and in Isuzu. So we are implementing these functions in here from the interface, which is good because this is what interfaces do. Okay, I can have this as long as I declare that there must be a function of miles per hour, then it means every function that derives from this interface should have that function as well. So this is what we learned in a previous video. Quite all right. Now, why is the interface in this case advantageous? Well, it means if I say implement like that, implements car like so. Let me use a capital there. Uh -huh. So what I'm saying is both these guys are implementing uh, car here. So just by doing that, it means they become of type car. They are no longer of type, they are of type BMW, but they, are, they derive from a car here. So it means in this function, instead of just specifying either BMW or Isuzu, I can just tell it to expect a car like that. And then it won't care whether the car is an Isuzu or a BMW. So let's see that in action. If I refresh, ooh, now they, uh, that must be compatible. So I forgot there for a second. Okay. This one expects a float of miles. So the implementation should be the same here. Okay. There we go. So let's try that again. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And now you see five and 10, though it looks like five, 10, but what I want to do here is instead of, uh, what do I do here? Um, the echoing here, I think, let me add a break tag here just so we can have a separate line for every result. Yeah. Okay, so now you can see there's five and then there's 10 there, which is pretty good because now it has accepted that both are of type car so whatever I supply here, whether it's a BMW or an Isuzu, it's going to recognize it as an instance of car and it's going to work. So this is how you can use an interface to do type hinting for uh, objects like these ones here and classes. Okay, so you won't be uh, encountering much of this kind of thing in your work, but in case you do, at least you have an idea what is going on here. So I hope you have learned something new and I will see you in another video.